Chapter 11, Yacht Crashers. You're preparing for the yacht party, scratching your head over what to wear when your phone buzzes. Aislinn to the rescue. Oh, what are we supposed to wear to the thing? You read my mind, I have no clue either. I know Gabe wanted us to blend in, but what's the dress code for a daytime party on a giant yacht? Seafaring shit? Does that mean private or pirate hats or sexy coast guard vests or why not both? GG, you're the party authority here. What are we actually going to do? I hate to say it, but I think we all need to take a little fashion inspo from Bao. Now there's a sentence I never thought I'd hear. I can't believe I'm actually agreeing with that. Trust me, ice luges are way more fun when you dress down. You remember the reason we're crashing the party, right? It's an all-day party, Quinn. I can't stock DAs that entire time. You set the bones down and consider your options. Dress to impress! Choose this look. Oh, Lord. I'm, I'm serious. I, I look like a little toddler. I've been dressed by my mommy and daddy. Mommy and daddy dress me! <laughs> Oh, God. <coughs> you admire your efforts in the mirror as you hurry out the door. Damn, maybe I should join a yacht club. That what they call preschool. Your phone buzzes again to let you know that your ride to the marina is about to arrive. Time to scare these DAs into making a mistake. You tip your driver and climb out of the car to find Ace Lynn and Gabe waiting in the shadow of several enormous luxury yachts. Are these yachts or cruise liners? I think the official term is super yacht. Another might be environmental disaster. And in that get up, you look like you've sailed on more than a few of them. Ah, uh, just don't ask me to tie a knot. What does it say about me that this look is totally working for me? Ugh. T leans close, resting her hands on your waist as her lips find your ear. I want you to talk snooty to me while I take it off of you. A horn sounds on the boat. If you two are done, shall we board? What about Gigi? Oh, she's way ahead of us. He points her out on the main deck as you head up the red, white, and blue garlanded gangplank. She's in an animated conversation with someone that looks like they've been on the billboard at Times Square. As long as she remembers why we're here. That makes twice! Twice you've said that about her, I'm just saying. You act like she's, like, completely unprofessional, I will say that. After a few minutes, the yacht's deckhands set about dismantling the gangplank, and you turn to Aislinn and Gabe as you scan the deck. Have you seen Calvin Colby? Physically, no, but his face sure is plastered everywhere. Subtlety never won a mayoral race. Do you think he knows we're here? I doubt it. There have to be at least 500 people on this yacht. Do you think we'll be in trouble if he spots us? No reason to think so. Like I said, he and I go way back. He'll probably just assume an old colleague wants him to... or wants to see him win the race. Just make sure he doesn't check out the list of which old colleagues have totally paid to be here, then. A waiter wearing a large Calvin Colby button stops in front of you with a tray of sushi. Abe takes a piece, nodding for you and Aislinn to follow suit. It's gonna be a long day. For now, relax, enjoy the amenities. When we see the window to dig deeper, we'll know it. Well, if it isn't the band of defectors, I have to say I'm surprised to see you here. You turn to see Martin sauntering up a trademark smug smile breaking across his face. Isn't this a fundraiser for the city's most powerful? I, I don't think that includes a little venture by any stretch of the imagination. You always were lacking in imagination, Martin. His gaze flicks towards you, taking in your outfit in grudging surprise. You certainly remember to dress for success. Maybe you'll blend in with the elite today. Honestly, Martin, I was, uh, I was hoping we'd bump into you. Why, so you can try and snake out another client? Well, I was going to say because I missed our little talks, but sure, I can do that too. Don't get your hopes up. Valencia might have been susceptible to your bleeding heart nonsense, but the people on this yacht are an entirely different caliber. Feel free to watch me and learn how to court people, uh, the business of most important people in the country, though. 
He saunters past you and disappears into the crowd. Does he always have to be like that? Hmm. You can't fight nature, I guess. Sounded like a challenge to me. Are you the one who told me to stop trying to one-up Martin? I am, and I stand by it, but he's not wrong about the amount of power concentrated on this boat. And McGraw Byrne isn't the only firm that knows how to woo a power player. Losing the potential clients will give us a good excuse to split up and look for the DAs, too. Did I hear someone say something about smoothing? Because I've already landed a Monday morning meeting. Nice work, but if you really want to impress me, you'll land five more. I can do that in my sleep. Are we trying to present a united front from, uh, like we did at the gala? Nope. This is a crowd. It's uh, all about ass kissing. Send a text if you see anything suspicious, otherwise pucker up. <laughs> oh, why do I feel like that's not the first time he said that? He raises a sushi to you with a wink, peels off to introduce himself to a suave-looking older man. Well, to think, for just a moment there, I was hoping for nothing but a day on a yacht and some Nancy Drew with the DAs, but here goes nothing. She gives you a nervous grin and wanders towards a group of wealthy young women. You forgot to give me a kiss before you left. Come to mama. You forgot to give me a kiss, too. No, I'm kidding. Gigi makes a kissing face at you. See, she gives us more than Aislinn! And sits off towards an elderly man with thick glasses. Okay, well, who should I kiss up to? You have over 500 people on the boat. I'm sure you'll find someone. You make your way across the deck to scope out the crowd. A glittering flash catches your eye. A beautiful woman with long, sparkling mermaid's tail twirls in a tank for an appreciative young crowd. Nearby, a brave souls bob and sway on the dance floor. The uh, more sensible guests take first pick from the enormous brunch buffet. Woman at the buffet. You approach the buffet, swathed with red, white, and blue ribbons and flowers. Flag sporting Calvin's campaign motto flutter nearby. A mayor who isn't afraid to get his hands dirty. Uh-huh. Real humble, Mr. Superyacht. Oh, I just love him, don't you? You turn your head and find a polished woman standing beside you, gazing reverently at Calvin's flag. I really think that anyone could fix our city. It's Calvin Kobe. Oh, uh, I think he's gonna be one hell of a mayor, remember? You swallow any reservations about Calvin and smile. Oh, there's nobody I trust more to rid the city of crime than, uh, the Joker. I mean, <clears throat> him. I mean, look at his record in the DA's office. It's exactly what I've been telling all of my friends. Look at those eyes. You can tell he's not a regular politician just gazing into them. Right, how could a man with such a <clears throat> noble brow be anything but trustworthy? It's impossible. She gives you an appraising look. Are you a donor too? Oh, yes. You hand over your card. I am, and it just happens that someone who's very well situated to help other donors with all the business interests. It's nice to see lawyers in the city bending to get the champion one of their own. I always knew those jokes about you having no souls couldn't be true. Hmm, oh no, it's absolutely true about some of us, just not me. You are spirited. No, I have a reputation for it. Yep, I, I literally do. Good, I remember the next time that I'm in need of legal assistance. She slides your card into her pocket and walks away with a smile. Woman at the Mermaid Show. You scope out the crowd as you approach the Mermaid Show. Every preteen on the yacht seems to be there, gasping and cheering as the performer moves through the tank, her long hair and fins shimmering in the water. Mama, I want her. Pull we'll her for your birthday party, honey. Now shush up while Mommy sends a very important email for work. I don't want to hire her. I want to keep her. She can live in the pool and do tricks for me and sing. Don't be silly, Miller Bell. We can't just buy you a mermaid. Why not? Because, uh, because... Ah, uh, because mermaids can't sing in captivity. But she's already in captivity. Not at all. Boats like this have special tubes going into the ocean that allow mermaids to swim up and visit for a while. And if anyone closed that tube and tries to keep her here against her will, she'd be so sad she'd lose the ability to sing and dance for you. 
The mom gives you a quietly grateful look. But what if we visited her, or invited her to live with us? She wouldn't say no to that, would she? We could ask her, but, uh... Would you give up a beautiful, limitless home on the ocean, on the floor, to live in a pool, even if a man having a wonderful new friend like you? I guess not. Mommy, can we at least talk to her before she goes back to the ocean? I think we can arrange that. The little girl nods, satisfied, and returns her rapt attention to the mermaid as she surfaces with a peal of song. Thanks for the assistance. Do you offer babysitting services? <laughs> I'm afraid not. Mermaidology and legal services are all I'm good for. You hand her your business card. Thanks. If uh, I need any of the latter, I'll let you know. Clearly you're good at thinking on your feet. Thank you, I try. She pockets the card and returns her attention to her daughter. You take the opportunity to slip away while you're ahead. Yeah, especially before she literally asked me to babysit. Listen, if you can juggle a jury and the prosecution or defense and the judge, you can juggle my daughter. Come back here. The man on the dance floor. Middle-aged man bobs his head enthusiastically on the side of the dance floor. A quick assessment of the, his Italian leather boat shoes and designer shirt tells you he's a man with cash to burn. I mean, he really looked like an average Joe to me. You should get out of, get out there. Oh no, I'm enjoying the tunes. Most politicians assume the donors want a string quartet at every damn event. You turn your attention to the live band. They're playing a gritty but rousing rendition of Margaritaville. Ah, oh, big Jimmy Buffett fan, huh? <laughs> I could listen to him all day. Even a, a cover band gets my blood flowing. Are you a fan? Oh, yeah, sure. I can't get enough of him. I got a favorite song. All my exes live in Texas. Cheeseburger in paradise. A whole lot of sitting and drinking. It's uh, this quintessential country uh, song. The man raises a puzzled eyebrow at your cobbled uh, together song title, looks you up and down and laughs. <laughs> That's a good prank. It even sounds like something he'd write. Ah, he can have it for free. Or uh, you can if you're musically inclined. <clears throat> More of an appreciator, but I'll pass along the idea to Jimmy. We've met a few times at events like this. Not often you meet someone with a taste at one of these things. What do you do? Uh, whatever my clients need me to do. Like uh, Jimmy, I like to think of myself as a person of many talents. You hand him your business card and he reads it over. A lawyer, huh? You any good? One of the best, though I'm not at one of the stuffy firms most of the folks on this yacht probably use. Are you in the market? Just so happens I am. How about I come down to your office later in the week? I'll uh, get my Jimmy Buffett playlist ready for you. The final chords of Margaritaville linger in the air for a long moment before the band launches into a Springsteen song. Something tells me the burger actually would have been the correct song. What a run. You chuckle and slip away, leaving the man to enjoy his music. You're crossing the deck of the yacht to report back to Gabe when you catch sight of the ADA's deep in conversation. That's Erica and Carl. Looks like they're talking about something serious. You try to move your, make your way over to them, hoping to listen in, but before you can get there, several Calvin supporters cluster around him for a photo blocking your path. Everybody say inauguration! The photographer snaps the picture, and once the group finally disperses, Erica and Carl are gone. You can't help yourself from kicking a nearby chair in frustration. Damn! Um, uh, Quinn, you, uh, you okay? Uh, Bow, I'm just, uh, running into roadblocks with the case. Must be a pretty important case if you're willing to assault furniture on a politician's yacht. Uh, one of their plaintiffs is Aislinn's grandmother. Oh, damn, that is important. Yeah, every time we hit our setback, I feel like we're letting her down. He hesitates for the briefest moment as if he's wrestling uh, with himself. Oh, I doubt Ash sees it that way. Look, it's not the same as helping Ash, but if you need a win today, you should talk to Linda. Um, senior partner Linda? You think she's willing to jump ship? 
Maybe. I overheard her and Reggie talking about it on the partner's rooftop the other day when I was dropping off a brief. What were they saying? It was just before Reggie handed in his notice to Eli, he was trying to convince Lyndon to join him. To come to us? Yeah, he was talking about how Gabe is creating the kind of firm McGraw Byrne was supposed to be. Linda kind of, well, she didn't seem completely sold, but she agreed that Martin's been making some illogical choices since Eli's basically given him free reign. That makes a lot of sense. Everything Martin does is for short-term gains, but Linda's a chess player. She thinks 50 moves ahead, minimum. Well, if that's the case, she would have jumped ship before Reggie. Easily. And she uh, clearly doesn't love the that right now she's stuck trying to keep Martin from doing too much damage. You study his face, looking for any hint of deception or subterfuge, and find it open, as always. Wow, you're a good friend. I know what it must be costing you to watch your aunt's firm come apart like this. It hurts like hell, but frankly, she's the one that let me down. The firm coming apart is just helping me see things more clearly. And with Gigi gone, I guess I don't see any reason to stick around and watch the wreckage. Have you taken any meetings yet? I haven't actually reached out to anyone yet. I thought I should take my time, research which firm would be the best fit for me, you know? That sounds incredibly sensible. I hope it works out for you, truly. Ah, uh, thanks. He nods down the deck. Anyway, Linda's over there kicking ass at Shuffleboard. If you want to poach the best corporate lawyer in New York, uh, there's your opening. Diamond choice. I'm pretty much going to assume that Bao will probably be one of the last ones that joins us. Because we sure as shit aren't taking Eli. Puck! Yeah. You know, you gotta really force the puck because YouTube. Thanks, Bao. I owe you one. Huh, don't worry. I already uh, put it on your tab. No, literally. A couple thousand dollar bottles. <laughs> and he scurries away. No, you, you hurry over to the shovelboard court where you find Linda triumphantly brandishing a cue for an intimidating crowd. Well, who's next? Please tell me there's someone here who can present at least a token of a challenge. I'll play. Linda turns her eagle eyes on you, her lips curling into a pleasant surprise. Well, are you sure you want to subject yourself to total humiliation? I haven't lost a game yet. And that's usually how it works for you people like you, and then all of a sudden someone comes by and takes it from you. Finally. What? Linda? Mm. Prepare to be annihilated. Linda's eyes light up at the challenge. Strong words. I hope you have the skill to back them up. Eh, hand me a cue and we'll both find out. If nothing else, I appreciate the fire. She hands you the other shovelboard cue while staff members return the pucks to their starting positions. Imagine getting paid to do that job. <laughs> oh my god. Game on. Reigning champion goes first. Oh, be my guest. She lines her cue up with a white puck, closes one eye, and nudges it gently across the board. It sails across the court, settling to the ten-point zone. Mmm. That's because she's hoping you knock hers back. Perfect! You're up! You position blue puck, considering how to make your move. If I aim for a puck, I could try to knock her out of the zone, or I could focus on scoring my own points. I should focus on scoring my own. You focus intently on the ten-point zone, kid, take a deep breath, and bring your cue into the contact with the puck. Come on. It sails past Linda's puck, coming to a gentle stop in the eight-point zone. Ah, still in the game. Not for long. There's no room for safe plays in Shuffleboard, Quinn, or anything else for that matter. Mm-hmm. She gives you a piercing look as she lines up her next shot. So let's hear it then. Here one. Don't play coy with me after you so wisely made Reggie an offer. I knew it couldn't be long before you or Gabe came for me. No, I've got the hitman trained on you. We're just looking to take you out. Knew or hoped? 
I don't hope for things, Quinn. I anticipate them, so... Mm. Winning over Reggie was all about speaking from the heart. Linda is more likely to be impressed by logical arguments. You got me. Richie and Associates is prepared to offer you a partnership. And why would I consider leaving one of the most uh, prestigious firms for an as-of-yet unproven startup? Aw, uh, excuse you? Bish, I've won several cases. Okay, screw you. We have literally won countless ones so far. Uh, because unlike McGraw Byrne, we're making smart long term plans. You think you see a spark of interest flare in her eye? Go on. Anyone can see McGraw Byrne is flailing. Eli's given too much power to Martin. Martin doesn't have the experience to steer the ship. Worse, he's too arrogant to turn people with more insight than he has. He could drive you into the ground. McGraw Byrne still has decades of reputation to trade on. Why are you better positioned for long term success? It's 2022 reputation is garbage. Regardless, I'm serious. We have Gabe. He's an excellent lawyer and he spent his time at McGraw Byrne learning from the best. And that includes you. He knows the importance of surrounding himself with a good team with diverse strengths and levels of experience. And he listens to them. We all want the firm we're building to be strong in 30 years. She nods approvingly. You're clearly not wasting any time amassing firepower. And you're one of the biggest uh, weapons the city has to offer, so how about it? Linda considers your face unreadable and nods to the court. It's your turn. You consider the state of the play, Linda's second puck, thrown while you laid out your argument, sits in the seven-point zone. You can win this, but is winning the smartest play? Go for the win. You line up your puck carefully with Linda's and hit it hard. Come on, buddy. Don't you dare. Oh, yeah, see, I'm going for it. The puck sails across the board, hits Linda's, nudging it into the minus... Zone. Your own puck remains in the seven point zone, putting you firmly ahead. Uh, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 hold on. I thought we were in the eight point zone. I. Someone fact checked me, but I'm pretty sure we were in the eight, remember? Booyah! Linda gives you a dry smile as if you onlookers applaud your win. She offers her hand to you. I can see I've met my match, and honestly, I appreciate a competitor who takes the game seriously. I know I do. Tell Gabe I'll call him in the morning. Yee. Can we fire Robin yet? Until then, get away from my shuffleboard cord. I don't get to spend nearly as much time on yachts as I should. You laugh and relinquish the cue, moving away from with a triumphant spring in your step. The chiming of a glass rings out across the deck, calling the guest to attention. You look to the prow and find Calvin standing with a champagne glass and a politician's grin. Loathe as I am to interrupt the party, my campaign manager insists that I bore all you fine folks with a speech. The statement is met with appreciative laughter. Gabe snorts softly as he, Hazelin, and Gigi find you in the crowd. You'd have to chain Calvin to a pipe in the brig to keep him from giving a speech to this audience of this size. Do super yachts have brigs? You still have so much to learn about the rich, Quinn. Pretty much, yeah. I forget the smarm factor luck. You follow Aislinn's intense glare to Eric Carpenter, or Erica Carpenter and Carl Goodall. They stand together near the prow, listening to Calvin with good-natured smiles. Glad to know they haven't abandoned ship yet. What are they gonna do, jump in the ocean? All jokes aside, I'd like to thank every one of you for your grassroots support. It means a world to know so many people have such faith in me. As many of you know, I haven't 
I wasn't born into this high-flying life. It took hard work and determination to get here. From snagging college scholarships, to my time as a federal clerk, to my work in the DA's office, my path has never been guaranteed. In fact, the hardest part of this campaign is leaving the DA's office behind, but I know that Amy, Carl, Miles, and Erica will continue the work I began. Uh-huh, how'd you land the super yacht, asshole? Mm-mm. <clears throat> You cast a suspicious eye on Carl and Erica as they nod graciously at the praise. Hmm. Who are Amy and Miles? Could they be a part of this? Amy Tellerman and Miles Swartz, who are absolutely peak bulls in court. And to answer your question, no. If they knew anything legal happening in that office, they'd be the first to blow the whistle. So I suppose that could be an evidence that Calvin isn't involved in the scheme. Or that he's keeping it very far away from them. I'd say it's just guess we shouldn't be reading too deeply into a campaign speech. There's so much more work yet to be done, which is why the city needs a self-made man sitting in the mayoral seat. You don't need more pulp politicking. You need a mayor who isn't afraid to do whatever it takes to make the city the best it can be. We need Calvin Colby. Ugh. The audience burst in a support of cheers and reporter's applause. Calvin smiles, allowing them to go on a few more uh, moments before raising his hands for quiet. Thank you, ma'am. But today isn't about me or my unique past. It's about the future. It's about you. Your gifts of time, hard work, generous contributions tell me that that candidacy paves a road to a brighter future for all of us. As another eruption of a cheer, she's bought Aislinn rubbing her temples. Yeah, no, I am too. Are you okay? I don't know how much longer I can take standing here and watching Carl and Erica bask in the applause. Be patient. Calvin should be wrapping up soon. You get an idea, then tuck at Aislinn's sleeve gently. Watch this. You discreetly worm your way into a different part of the crowd, keeping a low profile. With your continued support, I can serve this city as mayor. With the same conviction I brought to the DA's office. Heckle him covertly. Nah, we'll cause a distraction. Careful not to be spotted, you lean towards a congregation of seagulls perched on the railing and shoo them away. With your continued support and our path to victory, the birds surge up abruptly, noisily, flying in various directions and startling the guests. Hey Christopher, could you add deal with the birds, uh, New York birds problem to my list of platform points? I have to ripple to the audience. I'm just kidding. I love all of your city's wildlife. In fact, that's probably my cue to wrap up. A horn blast drawing the crowd's attention to the fact that you're about to dock in the cove on a small island. It's too bad sea calls didn't shit in your face. I mean, what? All of this is why I've set up a good old-fashioned clam bake on this beautiful island. For the future of New York City and all of you. Mm -mm, no, I'm not gonna say it. He raises his glass and those in the audience with drinks raised to follow suit. Here, here. To the future. Slink back to your colleagues, disappointed. I mean, you tried. I can't believe you right now. What? Listen, I tried. Neither can I. Somehow managed to make him look better? Valiant effort, Quinn, but Colby probably rehearsed for that exact scenario. This event's too important to let him get distracted. And hecklers just allow, you know, yeah. Aislinn places a hand on your back. You made me feel better at least. Well, then it was worth it. The gangplank is brought back down after the ship docks, and the donors start to make their way down to the beach. Now, go and enjoy yourselves, and please give freely. We've still got a long way to go before I'm in the mayor's office, after all. Give freely. I'm gonna give you the middle finger. You keep an eye on the ADAs as you disembark onto a private beach laid out with all the clam bake trappings and piles of expensive food on a pristine seafood buffet. 
Yet he stay close to Calvin as a second staff dispenses welcome cocktails, chatting amiably with his guests. Great, I've barely seen them all day, and now they're stuck to Calvin like a pair of ticks. Eh, it's as if they've been laying low on purpose. Or doing something shady below deck. What does it say about their operation if they're not as shaken by seeing us here as we'd hoped? Uh, do they think they're that untouchable? Are they right? Let's not jump to conclusions. From what you overheard at the gala, we know that they're uh, not untouchable, and we just, uh, we know that they're afraid of us. So, what's our plan? We do nothing. Calvin and his entourage are obviously planning to use this meal to work the crowd for more donations. In all likelihood, we're not going to catch Erica and Carl doing anything nefarious for at least a few hours. So, uh... Who's ready to hit Ice Luge? What the what? You point to a large ice sculpture shaped with a, like a seagull. Bao is already kneeling in front of him, mouth at the tapered opening as another associate pours vodka into the top. Now we're talking. I'm not sure what part of what uh, I feel uh, or what I just said translates into feel free to get lit on a sting operation. <laughs> Listen, the other choice was give up. So, you know. Um, all of it? She grins at you and jogs over the ice luge. Noticing Bao playfully uh, nudging him out of the way. I think I might not do that. Fine. I won't hit the ice luge, but next time, definitely. You linger with Aislinn while Gabe heads into the crowd. Yeah, never gets old, you know. Watching you. Watching me epically fail to disrupt an obnoxious speech. Watching how far you'll go for me. Her hand moves to your back. She runs her fingers gently up your spine. One thing I can admire about Colby is that he goes all out when giving thanks to his loyal supporters. But he's never going to fit a backer as loyal as you've been to me. Are you up for a little thank you? I'm sorry. Huh? <laughs> Over the island with Aislinn, sneak back onto the yacht with Gabe, enjoy the clam bake. <laughs> Never been to a clam bake, but you know, um, explore the island with Aislinn, why not? She sets a brisk pace and throws a teasing glance over her shoulder at you as she leads you away. Finally, she stops near a rock outcropping. This feels secluded enough. You stand at her side and gaze out of the magnificent rock formations all around you. Hell of a view. The mountains aren't so bad either. You glance sideways and see her winking at you and then realize she's carrying a full champagne bottle and two plastic flutes in one hand. Someone's got sticky fingers. Colby stealing my Nana's savings. Champagne seems more than a fair in exchange. You grab the tied knot of her shirt and pull her towards you. So what's your excuse for stealing me away? Well, I don't love drinking alone. You watch hungrily as she curls her fingers around the neck of the bottle and moves her hand up and down. <sighs> it's just wrong. It's just wrong. So, this is just about the drinks, huh? Nothing else on your mind? I didn't say that. She didn't have to say anything at all. <laughs> oh. Anyway, she nibbles her lower lip, eyelids growing heavy as she takes you in. I've had my fill of smooth talkers today. I want something real, with someone real. The raw sens sensuality in her voice makes your heart race. You take the bottle from her and pop the cork. Let's see how it tastes on our lips. Taking your cue, she extends the flutes for you to pour into, and hands you yours. She raise your glass to real people and things. She laughs and taps her glass against yours. You take a long sip, the champagne cool and sweet against your tongue. 
Her eyes stay trained on you. She lifts her glass to her lips. A little escapes over her lower lip as she drinks. You missed some. You set your hand on her cheek and brush off the stray droplet with your thumb. <clears throat> you missed some, too. She leans in and presses her lips against yours, followed by her body against yours. You take sharp inhales in between the breathless kissing, spurred on by her low hums of satisfaction. Mm. It is taking everything I have right now not to, to rip you out of that outfit. That was the goal when I picked it. Making Quinn crazy? Quinn now talks about himself in third person! <laughs> removal. Her hands press against your chest, fingers sliding across the material of your clothes. I would say I regret what I, uh, I'm about to do to your brand new outfit, but you knew what you were doing when you wore it. Infiltrating a yacht of evildoers? What? Let's continue this. On those rocks. She grabs your wrist without hesitation, leads you over the jagged rock face. She hikes her skirt up to free her legs as she prepares to climb. A little help, Quinn. You move up behind her and slide your hands onto her waist, pressing her up as she, her hands find the ridges. She manages to make it up a few feet before losing her grip and falling back against your arms, laughing. Whoops. You did that on purpose. She puts her hands onto yours, guiding them along her body and down to her hips. She turns her head to look at you, eyes gleaming. Push harder this time. She starts back up the rocks as you press your hands against her rear, boosting her up. You feel your heart beat faster while you watch her agile body from this angle as she climbs. Upon reaching the top, she hooks her fingers into the waistband of her skirt and slowly bends over to remove it, giving you a show. I still gotta get up there. She laughs and twirls her skirt into a makeshift rope. Somehow, this works now. Which she lowers down you. You grab the end of her skirt and, using it as leverage, quickly make your way up the rock face to meet her. She greets you immediately by pulling you to the ground and kissing you. She tosses her head back with a moan as you tug uh, your, her neckline aside, slipping your hand beneath the fabric to cup her. Oh. Pretty much, it literally was immediately what you thought. The bout chicka wee wee. You kiss her one last time before collecting your clothing from the rocks, and you hear some drunken laughter in the distance. We better get out of here before some donors catch us with our pants down, literally. Oh, please. You know, they're not. They're probably coming to do the same thing as us, right? Maybe, but I guarantee not as well. Aha! She giggles. Holding her gaze for a moment longer, her hands lingering on yours while she wants, like she wants to tell you something. And then she shakes her head, grinning. Come on, trendsetter. You help each other get dressed again and make your way back to the boat. Oh, and sounds after you return to the beach. The sky is rapidly cycling through glorious shades of gold and pink. That's our cue to get back on the yacht, folks. But uh, don't you worry. Still plenty of time together, unfortunately. You and Aislinn hang back as Calvin and his entourage let the guests board ahead of you. them. You lower your voice. This is it, Ash. I watch Erica Carpenter. You stay on Carl. Got it. She gives your hand one last squeeze before setting off. You join the last of the crowd and board the yacht, watching from a safe distance as Calvin, Erica, and Carl step off the gangwall plank. After about a half an hour of watching the three of them speak with donors and accept an startling amount of checks, your hope begins to wane. Maybe this whole thing was just a waste of time. Until Erica whispers something to Carl and slips away, disappearing into the stairwell leading to the lower deck. Oh no you don't. Glance at Aislinn, ensuring that she's keeping an eye on Carl and hurrying after Erica to the stairwell. The lower decks are busy with staff. You weave around them, looking for Erica and spotting her just as she steps into a state's cabin. The door closes firmly behind them. Crap. I'm guessing the only way to get into that room without busting through the doors with scuba gear. Suddenly, a panel in the wall opens beside you. A startled staff member flinches and stares at you from what looks like a secret passage. 
Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize- I didn't expect- Back at you. Normally- uh, What the heck were you doing inside the wall? My job? You're gonna have to clarify that. Some of Mr. Colby's personal staff and highest donors spend the, uh, are spending the night on the yacht. They don't like to see staff when we're servicing their cabins, so we use the staff corridor to be more discreet. Basically, you keep the help out of sight and out of mind. So you're telling me that all the cabins on this yacht have a secret staff access door? It's not a secret. Guests are fully aware of them and can lock them from inside for their peace of mind. Staff member highs you uncertainly. Are you a guest or just a donor who suddenly wishes he'd uh, given enough to get uh, invited to stay on this thing? Well, there's still time. A buzzer goes off a couple of corridors away. The staff member sighs and hurries in its direction. Without skipping a beach, you open the panel to the staff corridor and slip inside. You walk slowly through the corridor, heading towards where you saw Erica. Now I just have to find the right room. Another staff member steps out of one of the rooms, an old ice bucket and an empty bottle of champagne under one arm. They haven't seen you yet, but it's only seconds until they do. Pretend to be a VIP. Ah, there you are. Oh, I'm sorry, but you're not supposed to be in here. Which is a boundary I'd respect if I hadn't been trying to get the attention of one of you for 15 minutes. Ah, oh, your buzzer must be broken. You don't say, and Calvin told me the surface on this yacht would be impeccable. Are you able to get what I need or not? Sure, I'll take your order right now. Listen closely, because I will not be repeating myself. I need one bunch of ripe bananas. A sp Speyside whiskey, aged no less than 24 years. And a pineapple pizza, all to be delivered in exactly 33 minutes. Did you get all that? Yes. Off you go, then. You fold your arms and give your best billionaire stares. The staff member scurries back into the kitchen. Once the coast is clear, you let out a breath and keep walking until you hear a faint. Did anyone follow you? I don't think so. You crouch, pressing your ear to the vents in the door. The familiar voice grows louder. You saw the way Ricci and his people were watching us, right? We get a hearing request on the Flannery case. Then two days later, they turn up here and I can't stop staring at us. The Flannery is always going to be a problem with a lawyer for a granddaughter. We should have vetted her better. How are you so calm about this? Richie's on to us. Him turning up here with no notice confirms it. We need to fold on Flannery hearing. Maybe if we give them what they want, they'll stop digging. You think people who put Peter Koenig away from murder will ignore a corruption case because they managed to get Tanaka's woman's grandmother back? I... I don't know. What what do we do? We need to talk to Judge Ritter. If he says we fold on the hearing, we fold. But I'll bet he's, he'll think of a better way to get Ricci off our backs. Now, when you're done with the little panic attack, Kelvin needs us on deck. Ah, so he's the brains. You hurry away with the door reeling as you make your way back onto the deck. You find Gabe and Aisley where you left them as the lights of New York glimmer in the near distance. Quinn, Carl went into a cabin, but I couldn't get near the door. I know, I got in a staff access corridor. I heard everything. And? They have a judge on their side. We need to get him, uh, get, need to get to him before he buries this whole thing. You've spooked the assistant DAs into revealing a new conspirator. But will this judge be above your weight class? Whoosh, keep fine, or keep playing to find out. So, uh, without further ado, hopefully you all did enjoy. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And head down to the description of the video. There are links to help support the channel and uh, a bunch of really cool stuff. And, uh... Yeah, that's about it. I'm uh, still uh, fighting the good old fight, you know, and uh, still trying to be uh, well right now. <clears throat> Just fighting something off, but I digress. Um, uh, it is what it is. Hopefully you all are doing a lot better than me right now. I'm just not feeling all that great. I don't know. Just 
couple things um, just have gone awry is about the best way to put it. And, uh, you know, just dealing with it, you know, just dealing with it. As we all deal with things that come our way, right? Isn't that the life's lesson to always be quick on your feet and, and keep, you know, dodging? And if you take a hit, just keep going, right? So that's a little motivation for you. So without further ado, love your beautiful faces. Once again, thank you all for tuning in and uh, your continued support. It's very much appreciated. I'll catch you all later. Peace out.